Oh, hi, everyone. How are you? I had a lot of dental work done today, so my teeth are looking a lot better. My my apparent 50-year overhaul is uh, going along good. Um, the other side where I have to get an implant. I've never had an implant. This one that I finally just got fixed was one I had a root canal on. And I um, haven't been able to afford the crown for now six years. So from when I had my root canal to where I'm getting my crown is six, six and a half years. But you know what? It's like things come up when you are a mom, you put yourself last and you put your dental care last. And they say you lose a tooth for every child you bear. And I've born six children and I've lost one, two, three, lost three teeth. And the fourth was so close to being lost that he doesn't think it's going to work. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago we were talking about pulling it too. But um, we decided to try and see if um, just filling it will help and help with the pain. But so I had six kids and I'm 50 and losing. I mean, you can really say say three solid teeth I've lost and now the one's crowned the one is fixed next to it so it looks okay well hopefully it'll stay and then where I'm getting my implant on the other the space was so small they're gonna be able to put one like larger molar in there and um, do that implants are freaking expensive and um, all of this was just something we couldn't afford had to really save up for and um, ultimately my husband took a loan out of his retirement because, um, as I was telling you guys, my dentist said, continue this way and you're not going to have any teeth. And he's like, you know, the cavities, cause I didn't know this kid cavities are like contagious to the other ones. So like they, um, the decay makes others get cavities. So, um, I had like 20 cavities needed my crown and had to have two teeth pulled. Um, and I had went over 20 years with zero cavities. I had braces and everything as a teen. So my teeth were pretty good, but um, after I got really, really ill and had sepsis and had so many problems because of that, um, my teeth went all the shit too. So getting them put back together and I'm now at less than 36 hours away from getting my shoulder fixed. So um, that's exciting for me um it's December 13th and you know we're getting closer to the holidays and I hope that you guys are you know um enjoying the season as I was saying to um in the comments to my friend there that this season is so it's such a mixed um bag I guess really as you get older because the nostalgia is there and you think of this memory because you smell and see something that is familiar and then you remember the person you were with isn't either in your life anymore or they're in heaven. I, I, you know, it's, I'm getting to the age where there are, you know, a significant part of my family that's no longer here and, um, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a mixed blade. I like the season and the feeling of the season, but, um, the actual day and, and things doesn't really, it's, it's, so it's not like climactic for me. It's not like, Oh, I can't wait till Christmas day. It's like, I just, I really like the season and, and I love Christmas lights. They've just always become so magic to me. And, and like I'm saying, I really want people to leave their freaking lights up. Um, they need to be holiday lights and holiday is Valentine's day. And so why can't they leave lights up? I mean, if you need to switch them out and do more red and white to feel better about yourself, cool, but just leave them. And, and that's where like more blues and purples and stuff are coming out. And as you guys, if you guys went to my Instagram and saw at Tabitha Jane zero, my Instagram and saw my Christmas tree, it is very sugar plum fairy ish. And I, I just love incorporating the blues and the purples for, for the holidays. So, 
Um, in the news, you know, a story that is near and dear to my heart because it's near my hometown um, that where I was born and, and raised is I was raised in um, eastern Washington. So the Moscow Four, the, the four that were murdered in Moscow, it really is hard for me because that's my kind of people and it's seeing some of the same newscasters or news channels that I grew up watching, um, you know, creme TV and everything and seeing those, those reporters from the Seattle area as well that I, I actually knew, um, in some of the work that I did there and it's just all very surreal. Um, I shared the videos that Truth and Transparency has put up. Lana, I think she's done a great job of putting together the best theory with, um, I think it's, I think it's the most plausible suspect. Um, I'm just going to say JS because I don't want to say the name because I don't want to get sued. Um, I think it's a very plausible theory and if it is indeed him and he is out of the country in Africa with his very affluent family, it stands to reason that um, they could be just making sure that their I's are dotted and their T's are crossed because they know they're going to be up with a hell of a fight because of the money that they have and the connections they have and they're just making sure everything is done right. Now you see the headlines and you're like, okay, a former detective just found a black glove near the area. Well, there wasn't snow the night of the murders. So is that somebody's glove? There's been so many people coming and going. Uh, maybe, maybe not. You know, it depends. I mean, I don't think that that's necessary, necessarily a bombshell. And then the coroner woman, um, she's also an attorney. And she confirmed that the victim's hands were bagged at the scene. Well, you 803, yes, 803. Can you freaking believe it? I'm at 803. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and like. Please, please, please. I'm so excited that people are listening to me and we're moving forward because the truth has to be exposed in this freaking we cover mostly and if you're seeing a theme here i cover skanks that shouldn't have bred and police work that is either incompetency or conspiracy i'm trying to figure it out with y'all on my on my side um so you know of course the hands were begged we talked about that with with shanann you know that's why those it was stated that there was paper bags with her body when she was checked into evidence that they counted the paper bags because they counted everything, you know, and, um, they did that. They, and that's, that's a pretty common thing. They bag the hands because, um, when you are being unalived, your, your defense is for your hands to go, um, towards whatever the threat is, whoever the threat is, your, your, your defenses are to cover your face with your hands and, and try to do as much damage to the, the threat with your hands. So that's where they're going to find more evidence is under the fingernails and, um, the hands themselves. So saw that and I was like, okay, that's not big news. Um, and then I also saw coming across my screen that, so Kaylee and Maddie were, so close that they are considered sisters and they everybody around them their friends and whatnot considered them sisters they're that close and yes they were sleeping in the same bed because Kaylee was heading down to Arizona and had already sold her bed so she was sleeping in Maddie's bed and so there is now a GoFundMe from Kaylee's father is that the way it goes as Kaylee's father um, and I think it's the sister Olivia who's on, who talks, talks quite a bit. Um, and they want money. They're doing a GoFundMe so that they can hire a private investigator because they don't believe that the police are doing the job properly. Now with that, 
as I do see them giving interviews, and some of those are obviously paid interviews or in, on Inside Edition and whatnot, you can, you can play devil's advocate and say the police aren't going to tell you anything because they see that when they do tell you something, you're putting it out there, and that's going to compromise the investigation. Now, they could say, oh, believe me, we're holding back this and that because we know that you told us not to. So maybe what we're being told, you know, isn't what, what everything they know. Then again, they're asking for money to get a private investigator. Now, from that, if we take that into that vernacular and we say, okay, let's go two ways with that. Let's say, okay, you get a private investigator in there and whatnot. Well, what's that really going to do for the prosecution? Because, um law enforcement and the prosecution and, you know, district attorney, they're, they're very, very, um, uh, they don't like a private investigator to be doing their work I'm in, in air quotes here. I'm, I'm air quoting over here. I know you guys can't see me because I've cloaked myself in darkness, but, um, I just don't know how that's going to affect the prosecution overall and, and getting justice. If the goal is to have a good, clean investigation and put the fucking monster that did this away, um, then a private investigator is going to muddy the water, in my opinion. Um, now, I think... I believe that they are getting this um, put in their ear by, there's a certain tragedy pimp that goes around with a big bullhorn that um, apparently Olivia had subscribed to long ago, whatever, long ago, far away, whatever. So when she saw that, oh, she's a fan, and then she turned it into, wow, you know, um, one of the victims is a fan of mine and it's like no the sister of one of the victims and you know I mean I think that when we start on YouTube and we're trying to figure out who's who in the zoo and see who we like and who we don't like I think it's easy to see those people on the surface and subscribe to them and then you kind of pick and choose who fits your style and who doesn't and I think that in the beginning I had subscribed to um those people but then when I saw that they were more in it for the money it seemed than actual caring and doing the right thing and um one of my things that really offended me was when they're standing in front of baby Quentin's house and the person who carries the bullhorn um had just received a meal because they had their subs pay for their airfare their hotel their meals um Everything. Everything. She shouted out to the next order that was being put in. Somebody said they were going to send food. She screamed. She goes, make sure it's it's extra hot this time. To me, if somebody is gifting you with a hotel stay, not that one person is. It's, you know, the conglomerative subs that are paying for all of that. It's, it's like if somebody else is paying for something, I'm certainly as fuck not going to be like, make sure it's hot too. It just, it was just tacky. You know, you're standing in front of, you know, a very tragic situation. Um, I, I don't know. It just bothered me. So I, I don't subscribe to any of those kind of people. And I, um, I don't strive to be like them in what I create. And I understand that my way of creating is a little bit different because I'm a little older and I am not uh, technologically uh, adept. So I thank you all for being patient and, and being more listeners than, um, than, you know, than, than watchers. But here, you know, I've been able to figure out how to put this document on so you guys can see it. And I hope to, I hope this is a bigger learning curve for me because I started my channel in June and I'm to this point now, you know, where I've, I think I put out, I think I'm 60 something videos, 803 subscribers. Thank you so much. And done two lives and I hope to be doing some more lives, but you know, I didn't know how to do this a year ago. Um, 
it's so I hope to get better and thank you for understanding and being um, comfortable with listening more. <sighs> so with that, you know, it's just, I get turned off by greed and I get turned off by um, the secrecy. And I think that there's a lot of it in any crime where we're covering the Watts and we're going through the Watts discovery now, but we know that while this was happening and until this discovery came out, there was a lot that wasn't known and they acted like they had done all this stuff and whatnot. And we're kind of coming to the conclusion that they didn't do everything they were supposed to do. They closed in and I believe intimidated Christopher Watts into a deal that was not to his benefit. And I don't believe that the full investigation was completed. Um, in that, I see a problem where agencies, governmental agencies, are able to hide behind that confidentiality and secrecy. And it is an accepted norm and you hope that they're doing the right thing behind the scenes. And that's why I'm really hoping that, you know, they really will come out and say, okay, you know, we did know right away it was this person, you know, we just had to watch this and that because, you know, because maybe they're going to extradite him. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody else altogether. But like I say, watch truth and transparency, check out what Lana did. Um, I shared it to my community page, but you know, that only goes 24 hours, but she really put a good presentation together as to how and why it could be, um, J S. And I think she did that, what, a week, 10 days ago, right in that time period. So after going back through the Watts, um, I just feel that there is a recurrent theme and that's greed. And I feel that people hide behind confidentiality, like I say, um, in law enforcement. And I think they do that in CPS. And I think that in personal lives, people act like they're doing something else for the good of others. But it's for greed. Like, let's say you're selling a product that has no proof that it works, but you have everybody around you believing that you're this benevolent creature that's just full of altruism and all you want to do is make other people's lives better because you found something that made you better and what you were doing was was being mom a stay-at-home mom to two little girls that you had locked up for 15 hours out of a 24-hour day and and with with all this that everybody thought you were such a good person for and making everybody feel better you got to go on all these vacations that you said that you won and, and were free and the airfare and the hotel and the food and the rental cars and, and, you know, the wine and alcohol medications for the, um, neck pain and headaches and, uh, other party favors were all there because you could live this lifestyle because all you're doing is making other people feel better and in that cloak was nothing but greed and if you look at what i was finding out last night about these ridiculous incessant phone calls from her mother instead of her mother getting to colorado and being available at the house so that she could make regular contact with the police because they were there. They were there where she had stayed, where she knows where they live, where she could have stayed free of cost. If they did need the house for the dogs to go through again or, or you know, to tape off again, you know, they're, if they couldn't pay for a hotel, well, they've got, you know, N.A. who seems to be running the show. And they've got everybody else there, you know, who would have been happy to have allowed their couch to have been served and, um, you know, I mean, come on, what was she saying that she had to go to her super cuts job and so she could only call in the evening and see how everything was because she's, she's working and so she couldn't come out there. Baloney, baloney. What is more important than this? If you have time to sit there and keep calling through the 911 dispatcher system to sit there and, and give ridiculous statements, then you have time to go out there. But once again, she had insurance policies on those little girls. 
So what's that? That's greed. Because you know what? If I would have had some inkling, suspicion, dream, or otherwise, the last thing in the world I would have done is gotten insurance policies. I would have been very open and clear about my suspicions, fears, and otherwise and said, you know what? I'm afraid of this happening. Why am I afraid of this happening? I'm afraid of it happening because this, this, and this, that you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, and you've made a freaking powder keg, toxic environment that's going to blow up and it's going to end up taking my grandchildren out because of your damn behavior to her daughter is what she should have done. But it's greed. And there is no amount of money that should ever be able to replace a loved one. And the fact that that's the first thing that was done when she had that, as opposed to going there and telling her daughter to knock her shit off and maybe going to Christopher Watts and say, hey, look, my daughter has had problems with telling the truth for a very long time. And these vacations are not paid off. And in fact, she did just take a rather sizable loan from her father that you don't know about. And she hasn't been making the house payment, et cetera, et cetera. So while well, she goes and gets her head straightened out, we're going to help you with the girl. So we'll stay another few months. And we understand if you cannot stay in this marriage anymore. Because I wouldn't be able to. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But you don't go and put your freaking money on it. Because this is no different than a horse race. She had a bet that those girls weren't alive. And if those girls weren't alive, she was getting a big fucking check. And that's ridiculous. And who has a bigger motive than somebody who has a big financial motive? Hmm? So Why? Was it acceptable for her to mysteriously know everything and not be checked out, not be listed as a suspect? That she was just this mom that just kept calling in being 100% accurate about this because who would think, whose mind could go there that that's what could happen to them? Hmm? When my husband was in the military, you know, and they're decommissioning ships and they've got all this and everything, did I think, oh, um, he's going to go and put me in the hazardous waste bin. I mean, I mean, I, I can't even think of anything that comes close to what was thought, but then for that to happen. And, you know, and I, I do call her the master of puppets. I see her running everything. And in the comments, as you, as you guys saw, um, one of our friends said, you know, that thinking about it in master of puppets, it makes you think of Pinocchio. And we know that Pinocchio was controlled. And so if you look at that dynamic and you look and you say, who is controlling Chris? Because if he was a puppet in the show and his strings were being pulled, who was controlling him and why? There's too many unanswered things. And this is just scratching the surface. If we go down to the circumstantial evidence and we go to everything else, there is so much reasonable doubt in this case. Of course, he would have never been convicted. If he would have been convicted, he would have been able to have gotten a plea of insanity straight up. Maybe served a couple of years to get his mind straightened out. But there's no way he would still be in prison to this day. There's no way. No way. Maybe some other people would have been in prison. But they're not. And it's not my goal to put other people in prison or to expose people like that. It is my goal to expose mummy dearest because people are too gullible and they don't understand this cloak that people wear and as I say it in law enforcement is it because they need to keep things close and you're trusting that they are then we take this apart and see that nah they didn't do what they said they were going to do is it with CPS where they're saying they can't talk about it but they're not doing anything. And when they do do something, it seems to be completely off the mark and to the wrong people. And is it to the people who are on Facebook right now who are acting like they have the best life and everything is so wonderful, but really they're covering up for the fact that their husband or wife is having an affair or that they are motivated by greed? I want people to look past what looks like the best mother you've ever seen. Because it disgusts me when people say that, that she's the best mother they've ever seen. Like, well, what the? What kind? Why? Because her house was clean? Yeah, if you lock up your kids during the waking hours, your house will be clean too. 
I want people to look past that fake, false baloney. I want to have people see that what is on the surface isn't always. And I want a whole reform of CPS. I think it's a broken system. I think it's a joke. I think that they sit there and they have meetings after meetings after meetings about procedure and forms and whatnot, and they don't actually help children who are in danger. And if they need more funding, then come out and say it. Come out and say what you need, how you need it, what would make things better. Would it be better with more 800 numbers? Would it be better with double the staffing? I mean, the cloak, the cloak of secrecy and deceit and greed has to be pushed aside. That's my goal in doing this for Bella and Cece and for the baby she was carrying. And no, I don't believe in saying neutral girl because I don't believe that that is the name. I don't see how, just, I'm just gonna say the baby she was carrying, okay? The 11 week old baby she was carrying. Anyway, we left off last night and I was having issues. I didn't realize I can push my up and down scroll button. My laptop is kind of new to me. Um, I've had it for a few months, as you guys know, but I'm, I'm, I'm old and I'm trying to figure things out. So... And this makes me scroll a little better. And I do see that I missed something, and I am sorry. So we'll begin here on page 243 of 1960. And where we saw here where it says that Jessica Bean saw a little girl shoe off Gooding and Hollow at Colorado, west of that location in a field on her hike this morning and con can talk and contact her by phone. Um, they did that. Now, what I did miss here was where it said, um, reporting person Kelly Trippy at 720404 blocked out would like to speak to an officer about, it says, hositing, H-O-S-I-T-I-N-G. I'm assuming that means hosting a candlelight vigil, V-I-G-I-A-L, in front of this house for Shanann tomorrow would like officer contact. So without the spelling errors, um, I did miss that. And I do think that that's a very, very nice sentiment from Kelly Trippy. Um, and then there was that Juanita, you know, just, mm. and then uh, New York's Times had, had called. So that's where I kind of, you know, didn't do the best job on that last page. And I apologize. So now we are at discovery page 288. And, um, Let's see here. I am drinking some mint tea. And it's very refreshing to drink mint tea, I'm finding. My little best friend Jules across the pond told me about this because... Um, have Crohn's and that got terribly activated by my influenza A and COVID adventures of the last couple months. So she was telling me that people over there drink peppermint tea. I didn't quite have peppermint, but I had mint. So I've been drinking a lot of mint tea and it was actually really, really kind of a nice feeling to drink mint tea. So what we have here is a Weld County Office of the District Attorney call detail report continued. So we're on page 12 of this, and it just has a lot of things that probably make sense to um, law enforcement personnel, not so much to me. Um, it is on that page 244, 1,960 for those of you who are looking, and if you can infer something more about that, I don't see anything of, of relevance, but I could be missing it. Discover page 289 on page 244 of 1960 is that continued call detail report. And it doesn't have any comments or anything. It's just going on and on. Discovery page 290, 245 um, is just more of that. So this goes on and on. 
and it just so it shows again and it says the responding or uh, the, the responding officers in their unit and so we did have officer boyer simmons scarlet bakes albert wall j doll herbert coonrod and goodman involved in those call logs and we also had davies manley perez james in in lines and it, it has their badge numbers as well so uh it says involvements and so it's uh, probably where the other um law enforcement were calling back and forth and then it has the record history so it says where they had um brad dotton um take the white lexus um on 815 it says like e n t r t so like in route on 815 at um 856 and then it has the next day at 1959 i n s v so you think maybe in service i don't know um and it's it's that white lexus the lexus that she said that she um got from that but that was just another lie they just went and leased it it was under a lease under christopher watt's name it was not earned she found out the kind of car that would be suitable and it's just it's just another lie there's nothing if indeed it was achieved by it is because she wasn't making the house payment so then if she was putting all of the house payment money into that then sure okay you earned it by buying it that way so let's say that you just spent two thousand dollars for a seven hundred dollar car payment does that make sense it doesn't does it now i ended up hearing and i don't know if this is true it's hearsay that her parents ended up with that vehicle so oh well i guess when insurance policies um on your grandchildren i guess that you can probably buy that but why would you want it why would you want something held on with such pain and deceit unless you're a deceitful person sipping that tea and then we're here at Weld County Office of the District Attorney called Detail Report. Um, and it's just continuing on and complainant, blah, 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 blah. Nothing that really makes any sense here. It says the dispatcher is Patterson and then Floors. Um, incident, code four, completed call. Um, DeWitt, no need for checks. Really nothing that looks relevant um, when they're doing convictions and they're probably or not convictions, but in a trial, um, these would be relevant because then you would know that officer so-and-so at this time, um, responded to this and can that officer speak to that. But where we're going through here, trying to, um, make sure that we know the genesis of the rumors and we know more of the facts than hearsay, it's not relevant to us um and so here we have cindy de Rose calling and um they changed her call from input to received and then it says um she was referencing shanann watts that she spoke with um officer 988 earlier and has more information for him to contact by phone and um it says address change from 2825 Saratoga Trail to 2825 Saratoga Trail. Not really seeing a change there. But you know me. Um, responding officers, duplicate CAD call. Um, and then we have Marcy Wamberg. And Marcy Wamberg called in to the command center on 8:14, so the day after um they were reported missing and mercy wamberg w-a-m-b-u-r-g called at 8:50 at night no actually 20:50. so 
Well, that's it. That's right. 8.50 at night. Um, and it says, reported person was at the Walmart in Longmont on Ken Pratt around lunchtime and saw the missing woman from Frederick from Facebook. She was in the checkout with the two small children buying booster seats in a potty chair. She was in the first South checkout line and other than the kids by herself. Oldest daughter was in the front of the cart. Youngest was inside the cart in pajamas and both had headphones on. Phone continued. How many times have we read this over and over and over again? And it seems like there's so much of this that is very repetitious. And I'm not seeing the kind of things that I would like to see. And maybe they're there. You know, like I said, I didn't peek forward. And I appreciate... um, one of my truth warriors saying in the comments that they have a copy of the rep- of this discovery as well. And it um, is working better for me to read it. And I thank you for that because to me, it's better for me to read it out loud and see it like this and know that you guys are out there listening too. Um, and you guys are kind of clearing the superfluous information and you guys are grabbing onto the meat so that we can discover, uh, dis- <laughs> we can discuss them in our lives. Um, and I can make sure I'm not missing anything. And you guys are kind of checking, checking, going through the checks and balances with me. It means a lot. Thank you. So we're going here. And now we've got this one. So basically, maybe what this is doing is it's just uh, expanded where we saw some of the other calls. Because then we have this Louisa Honorati again. And, um, you know, she says that she's the cousin to the missing female requests a phone call from a detective. She'd like more information about the situation and would like to provide the, some to the detective as well. Now, she's calling from Arizona. Um, why is she calling? Why is she not getting the information she needs from her aunt, Sandra? As she's saying, she has something to give too, as I said not really heard of this person. I mean, did this person say, hey, look, you need to be suspicious of the whole family tree. We don't like that branch. Um, or Sandy put her up to calling. Just duplicates on the calls. Or said, said, um, Flores incident completed and it says comments requesting hourly status checks and then it says warm me so on 815 it says warm me w-a-r-m me warm me and then there's a phone number and it says Tara Todd came across information she wanted to share with FEPD referring to missing person in the Denver mama's group she was requesting information on a weekend getaway Uh huh. Yeah, she was. And that's the thing. So if there was money for this weekend getaway after all of that, and they don't have any money and she's so sick, she can't do anything. And and she's pretend diabetic, but she's, she's going to go to Aspen with Christopher Watts. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there was money to go away for the weekend, not money necessarily for anybody to watch the kids, because it seems like she was just having favors called in, you know, um, maybe that money could have, uh, been used to fly Mama Rue out. Sipping and spilling the tea. So. Oh, Lord, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. You knew it couldn't be. You knew it couldn't be too far off. Because. Now. If this is, let me see where the last time we left off with um, Sandra doing her Scooby-Doo calls. Let's see. Because here she is again. I want to make sure it's not repeating because Sandra gets wild in the evening. Okay, yeah, it is the same. Because we have... 8.15 oh it is another one okay so we have here let 
Mamaru on 8-15-2018. We know that she started calling. We see the other report. Well, it appears it started earlier that day because it's saying... That zero five fourteen eleven. So at five fourteen a.m. Anne's mother requesting a call. So back here to eight fifteen. So she started at five fourteen a.m. And let's see here. Um, we're getting here to reporting person Deanna Roberts reference um, 18th of February 06. Oh, that's the that's the case number. So I don't know why it says that like Kathy. Must be Frederick. So it's like 18 FE 06743. Okay. It says reporting person is a psychic and says the missing woman is speaking to her. Reporting person believes she is deceased. She believes she is deceased or the reporting person. But it is possible that the girls are still alive. Reporting person asked if a recycle type plant is close to the house. Said the woman used the word word recycle is being said over and over, getting images of an open field, possibly behind the woman's home, also seeing blue barrels, 55-gallon drums, also seeing two males in overalls, unknown what type, contact by phone if needed, duplicate call, there we go, okay. Now, arguably, she wasn't wrong, but when people are missing like this, where are they usually going to be found? Okay. And, you know, what's that cop's name out of Michigan? Oh, he's a Peterson. Um, is he Scott Peterson? It's the cop that, uh, killed what, two of his wives? Drew Peterson. Drew Peterson, and he put them in the barrel. Um, I think it was his cousin or whatever. Like he had help with the barrel or whatever. And he's in prison, but his wife Stacy is the one that was like in the barrel. The barrel's never been um, found, and I think he got convicted of the killing the wife Catherine. Um, so he killed at least two wives, maybe three, was it? I can't remember everything right now. But, I mean, that's what happens. It's it's like when when you're starting to look at the husband as the suspect, and I think that became rather clear after the porch interview that it was looking like he was the suspect. Um, then, of course, you know, all of us are out there going, yeah, open fields, okay, look in the fields, look in the fields, yeah, look in a barrel, because that's what happens, that's what that's where people are found and psychics know that i mean does that make me or you a psychic going on you know what is logical i don't know i might want to set up a little shop and call myself a psychic i guess um I mean, because recycle type plant, you know, she didn't know that Chris worked at Anadarko with the tanks. It's, it's not too far off. I mean, I don't know that I would go and give her my Christmas money, but you know, the psychic, it's not too far off. And then we have, it's Honorati, Honorati calling back. Because... Sandra Rusick, so at 656-06556, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to go 0514, and we're going to go 0656, Sandra Rusick saying she is the mother of Shanann, Sandra lives in North Carolina and wants some answers now from an officer, 910, blah, blah, blah. 
Reporting purpose person said she even called the FBI this morning. Oh, no shit, Sandy. You're great. You know, you are getting the other agencies involved. You know, thank you so much for your service. I mean, like I say, you know, you have a horse in this game. You know, you are you are just just rooting, aren't you? Uh, I mean, thank thank God, you know, Sandra, that you are the, the investigator that's doing all of this. I mean, honestly. And so let me do this for you guys. This is Sandra Ruche, and I'm the mother of Shanann. I live in North Carolina, and I want some answers from an officer now. And you know what? I've even called the FBI this morning. I called an hour ago. He didn't call back. I called the FBI. Okay, so the FBI is coming in on this. Better call me back. I mean, come on. Let them do their work. And you know what? They already did the alphabet soup, ma'am. They've got the CBI and the FBI. And, you know, come on. Get off of them. Let them focus, weirdo. Anyway. So then it looks like more reporters. Oh. Oh, here we are. Ready? The Hamburglers in the PD lobby. Needs let in for briefing. Phone number. 303-895-7898. That is Tammy Lee, a.k.a. Hamburglar. All right. And then... Hmm? Okay. Maybe this is a different thing? I don't know. But it says... um given information and it says RPS boyfriend Andrew um, Andrew just asked for a chair he is going to try to get back into the attic reporting person stated the males are trying to leave and Andrew was trying to put a chair under the attic to keep him in there and then reporting person was crying stated that she needed officers to get there now stating he is un she is unsure if they are armed I don't know that that has anything to do with anything. I don't know if there's people in the attic. The whole flowers in the attic theme. I don't know what is going on. And then um, it says it stated that she is pregnant and needed officers to know that in case she dies. So it sounds like this is maybe the... I mean, because certainly they don't have all other calls coming in. Um, okay, here, this is going to make sense. Um, advised reporting person to get somewhere safe, but reporting person disconnected on call taker. And they tried to call back and it went to voicemail. Shit, when you call the cops and you've got a bunch of men stuck up in the attic and you've got a chair there holding the thing so the men don't come back out down and out of the attic, you may not be able to get the phone. And then it says disregard comments from 856 to 858 logged in wrong call by error. So they um, had this situation with the people in the attic and the pregnant woman. Um, must have been a lot of people getting pregnant. There must have been something in the water over there in Colorado. Um, they just put it into the long, wrong call log. And then it says, needing call from a Frederick officer ASAP. And then um, it says, um, Caleb with the National Center for, for OFR. I'm assuming that's for, but it's OFR. Missing children calling from 800-843 redacted. And then here we go. And we've got responding officers, Albert Wall J. Perez. Um, and it says, you know, they're at 815. Eight, on 815-18. So, you know, now we're, we're the on that Wednesday, right? Because it was the 13th where it happened on a Monday. 
Um, and then we're still going through this call de detail report. And then we've got Deanna Roberts called. Oh, it's the psychic again, Deanna Roberts. Um, they just redid what she said. Um, they changed the call from input to received. Um, cause it's just saying this again that, you know, she's a psychic and says the missing woman is speaking to her reporting person believes she's deceased, but it is possible that the girls are still alive. Reporting person asked if a recycle type plant is close to the house. Said the woman used the word recycle is being said over and over getting images of an open field, possibly behind the woman's home. Also seeing blue barrels and 55 gallon drums. Also seeing two males and overalls unknown what type contact, you know, with, it, with, by phone if needed. Um, and it says it's our, the call is already, um, it's a duplicate call with officers already attached to it. Um, in knowing what we know, I don't know that the word recycle, I don't know that Shanann would have been, I know that a lot of people have done, um, the EVP, the voice things and whatnot. Um, I don't have an opinion on that. Uh, of course I am spiritual and you guys know my little ghost stories and whatnot. So I do believe that, um, those who have passed over can very much communicate with us, but I don't know why she would have said recycle. Well, maybe it was because that book it was that book that he threw away. Did he put it in the recycle bin? So here we are at 258 of 1960 on discovery page 303. And duplicate call. And, oh my gosh, you guys, did I tell you about this? I got a scumbag attacker. I had a scumbag attacker comment. Oh my God, a scumbag attacker. And they said that this is, they don't know what I'm talking about and it's very disjointed. Yeah, there's a scumbag attacker, right? I got attacked. And I want to go spend some thousand dollars on, on find out. And I got to see if anybody's, you know, parking down the street and trying to stalk me. Uh, and check my mailbox for dead rats and shit. But anyway, um, that person had one whole subscriber. So I have 802 more than them. And their one video was of them from the waist down vacuuming their dog. And I don't know in what world that's relevant or how that isn't disjointed because I don't vacuum my cats. Um, so everybody's got one chance to comment and that's your one chance. I don't like it. I delete it. Um, so anyway, honestly, like I've had like what? 3% be weirdos. Scumbag attackers. Um, so now we've got Jake Willis with asset protection and let's see, um, they're changing the call from input to received. And here we go again. It's kind of repetitive because it says re re responding person has video footage. He wants um, Frederick PD to check out if referring the missing female and the kids, she may have been in the store on the 14th of August. Oh, chances are she wasn't re reporting officer responding person has officer James card. Yeah, this is the same one. We've seen that over and over again and she wasn't there. Um, and here we are still in this call detail report. And it says that Johnson needs to speak to the coroner about the Watts case and the coroner was paged. And, um, Officer Johnson, what's that? Acknowledge the page. And doesn't say what was that was about. Um, we've got Taylor Welch in here. And said that, you know, she's a close friend of the family and wanted to know if officers have any questions for her. That's very nice. Oh, 
Yeah, I would do the same thing, you know, but let's see. Um, complainant, uh, contact, whatever. So it says contact Zach Brick has flat irons HD ultrasound. Flat irons HD ultrasound. What is that? What is Zach Brick? Flat irons, F L A T I R O N S. HD ultrasound. Is this the mysterious ultrasound that we had no prenatal care for? We went and got a ultrasound somewhere at a mall. Is this it? Wonder what this is. Zach Brick. Oh, here we are. Oh, here we go. Now it says responding person works at the ultrasound clinic and has some information for investigators would like contact by phone, blah, 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 blah. Another reporting per person re referencing this address, Laura Weimer wants to see about getting the memorial items that were, that are here moved somewhere on the driveway. Current location has them getting wet from sprinklers contact by phone spoke to both responding parties. Family will decide to move memorial or not and we'll try to turn water on when the items are moved if they move them so this could be where some of this stuff comes from the ultrasound clinic interesting i like it all right and there we go shading call There we go. I'm actually going to mark that because there's so much about this mystery ultrasound. I'm going to put that back up here. I want to put it in 265 of 1960. And because you think it would have to be a private clinic because I don't think that medical would call um, because of confidentiality in HIPAA. So a private clinic, this is where this, this rumor comes from. Let me see here. We're still going on the call reports. And um, it says that, you know, the referring a reporting person will proceed with moving the memorial and should be done by um 230 sprinklers sprink, sprinklers can be turned on them i mean why would you call 911 if you see that the things are getting wet why wouldn't you just move them to an area where they're not going to get wet and just you know when the next time that chris is there or an officer is there say, hey, you know, I moved these because they were getting wet. I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know that I would call through 911 to say that, but maybe. Okay, and then here we go. We go and we've got um, Nathan Trina Stitch, um, neighbor Nate. And he is calling and um, it doesn't say what he said. It just, um, it just said that he called. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it says re responding person lives next door. Three people inside the house. One camera person, male with a suit. Responding person or reporting person doesn't think they're supposed to be in the house. And it's T-E-H house. Um, and it says... <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You ready for this? Reporting person spoke with the parents of the female that was involved in the incident and they weren't aware anyone was supposed to be in the house. Well, okay, neighbor Nate, you fucking asshole. Why aren't you calling Christopher and telling him this? Oh, well, well, I guess this is 817. So maybe Christopher was otherwise detained because um, it is putting this on the 817. So neighbor Nate's buddies with, the, um, with Sandra. That's nice. So we've got um, Nate calling Sandra. 
So, did Nate call Sandra with uh, N.A. Um, and say she was missing before she'd missed her uh, doctor's appointment? Or, as one of our very wise truth warriors in the comments said, did she cancel Shanann's doctor's appointment and say she's not going to be there? Ooh, sipping the tea. My neighbors aren't this nosy, and I'm glad. I keep them from being that nosy. I dress up like a witch 365 days of the week, and they think I'm scary. It works. I don't have evil on their deck looking at my house. Anywho, um, let's see. So neighbor Nate can see all of this inside the house. Well, then why did he not see what happened that night so we're going to go through this again reporting person lives next door three people inside the house one camera person male with a suit Reporting person doesn't think they're supposed to be in the house. T.E.H. house. Well, it's not his house. And then it says. So he. Okay. Did he call in all of these times? Because they have his name. It says contact, you know, Nathan, Trina Stitch. And then it has like all of these names. Are these all the times he called? Why is his name up there and then nothing else except for all of these things? And I don't know. Uh, re you know, reporting person spoke with the parents of the female that was involved in the incident and they weren't aware that anyone was supposed to be in the house. And then, um, reporting person states, there's a lot of media around and he couldn't answer any more questions. Oh, is he whispering in? There's a lot of media and I can't answer any more questions. But they got a guy on a, in a suit and one person's inside. Yeah, one's a camera person and one's wearing a suit. One scratching his ass and one just grabbed a grape out of the fridge. What the? How can he? And then reporting person stated the people that were in the house are going all throughout the house. And then it says Davies B. Forensic investigators for the defense. See supplemental for original case. Forensic investigators for defense. See supplemental and original case. So I think that they're saying, yeah, this is who was in there. It's the forensic investigators for the defense. It's okay, neighbor Nate. We're going to go ahead and pull those shades now, weirdo. I mean, what else could he see? I mean, I'd just be so creeped out if somebody could see in my house and see things that were that way. I mean, you know, most of us live, you know, I live in a cookie cutter kind of, you know, place, but... You know, at least they're offset a little bit enough that you don't see inside the other person's house. My last house, um, my bedroom window could see into the backside of the other people's living room. So, I mean, if they looked up, they could see in my bedroom. So, I just always kept that side shut. But, you know, it's like still they could see, you know, when my bathroom light was on and off. And I'm like, oh my god, they know every time I go pee. Um, so let's see. But I mean, for him to be able to see in the windows, so weird. Hope the, hope that the new neighbors know that you got neighbor Nate there and to pull the shades on that side. So then we have Jamie Brennan from Fox News. Um, who requested a ski to speak with Watch Commander in reference to the case. And 
and then it's just continuing on that. And then, gosh, this just goes on and on. Um, and then it says that there was, oh, we got, um, it doesn't say who, um, but we've got more activity here with a couple of officers. We've got Coonrod and we've got R-Y-S-A-V-Y. I don't know that I've seen that one, but the comments are from Coonrod where he said that he um, collected evidence from Longmont Police Department that were drying and booked them into evidence at the FEPD. Um, thanks for your update on that, Coonrod. And then uh, I'm still going on this call log. So call log complainant contact is Richard Holmes. Mike at Richmond Homes. I'm sorry, I misspoke. So Mike at Richmond Homes. Um, the call referring to items that were dumped at 6507 Black Mesa Road. Continue. It says cont oh, contact reporting person by phone. And then it says Manly B. Driver takes all trash to E-I-R-E dump site dumped on top area on Tuesday. Okay. And shows the officers, the officer Manley responded to that. And then we have Falcon Vika, Vika Falcon that needs a Frederick officer to call her. WCEO. So Vika Falcon, Falcon Vika, would like a free officer, or Frederick, so F-R-E, O-F-C, to call her WCEO. So maybe that's call her cell phone? Could be. Okay. Now, this looks like a good place to stop because we're out of that dreadfully boring phone log. And that has taken us to page 278. So we've gotten from page 243 to 278. And I will hopefully do some tomorrow because Thursday is the surgery. And... I don't think you guys want me. <laughs> you guys don't want me. Maybe because the Lord knows what I'll say. So we are on Discovery, page 323. three So we got from there. And then um, the next time we talk... Begin on the Regional Communication Center... Um, so we'll begin on 278 of 1960 on Discovery, page 323. And I thank you all for listening. I'm sorry this was not very entertaining. We've got, we're, I mean, you know, mining for gold. We're just getting it and sifting it all out, listening with all of our ears and, um, those of you who are seeing with my eyes, <laughs> seeing with your eyes, with my eyes, someone's seeing some eyes, um, and just seeing what each of us brings to the table with our own unique experience and keeping it to this point. So we're, we're moving towards, we have factual data to this point. Yes. If we skip ahead, we know how this plays out. Yes. If we skip ahead, we know that somebody may have called somebody from CPS and had all this stuff to say, but until we see it, we don't know. But I do like this um, ultrasound kind of uh, lead because obviously that's from a private ultrasound thing and that's where that begins. So many of these stories that, you know, grew legs start from something like that because that's a private ultrasound clinic. So probably, hopefully one of you guys, you know, will Google that for me before I even Google it, flat irons ultrasound or whatever. So probably one in the mall. Well, that did that. And what did he have to say? You know, did she go in there is the baby still alive you know because the gender reveal was canceled we don't know 
We don't know, but that's, that is very interesting. So on that note, we will close and, um, thank you all for listening. I really appreciate it and have a very nice night. Thank you. Bye-bye.